All right, welcome. So now we're going to start with our roller coaster demo. We have a track here that's made of wood panels and a metal track to simulate a roller coaster. And we also have a metal block that we're going to use to simulate something going down um, the track. And the purpose of this demonstration is to show how the block interacts with the various forces from this track. But before we understand, before we get started with this demo, it's important to understand the physics behind this demonstration. So let's take a look at that. There's two main forces acting on the block. We have the normal force and we have the gravitational force. In order to understand how these forces affect the block, let us draw a free body diagram of the block while it is at the top of the ramp. Here, we have the block at the top of the ramp. Where do you think we're going to put the normal force and the gravitational force? Here, we've drawn two sets of arrows. The blue arrows represent the normal force and the gravitational force is represented by the red arrows. So take some time and think about which arrow do you think represents the normal force and which arrow do you think represents the gravitational force. Again, you have four options for the normal force, arrows 1, 2, 3, and 4, and arrows 5, 6, 7, and 8 correspond to the options that you have for the gravitational force. All right, so now that you've had a second to think, the normal force is going to be arrow 1 and the gravitational force is going to be arrow 6. Um, it might look odd seeing that the normal force isn't directly up and it's not pointing straight up, but it's at an angle. But we have to remember that the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface at which the moving object is connected to. So in this case, the ramp isn't flat. We see that it's at an angle. So because of that, the normal force comes out at a 90 degree angle from that ramp. And the gravitational force, we know that points straight down in any situation. So that force is always going to be straight down towards Earth. All right. So now that we know what forces act upon the block at the top of the ramp, we also have to consider how energy affects the block as it rolls down the track. So we have energy of the moving object. There are two main types of energy that we're going to focus on. We have the potential energy and we have the kinetic energy. You see that the potential energy, the equation for it is mass times gravity times the height. And the equation for kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. Um, we see that the potential energy, the biggest factor in it is the gravity, right? Um, so let's take a look at this in a, an example. So here we have the ramp as we've shown below, as we've shown in the previous slide, and we have three different blocks for um, the ramp. Please note that these blocks are all the same exact size. Um, they're the exact same mass, they're exact same size, there's uh, different heights on that ramp. So what block do you think is going to have the greatest potential energy? Um, block one, block two, or block three? Again, remember that all these blocks, they have the exact same mass. Um, the only thing that differentiates between those three blocks is the height at which the block is at. All right, so the block with the most potential energy is going to be block one. In order to understand, we need to look at the potential energy equation again. Block 1, 2, and 3 all have the same mass and are affected by the same amount of gravity. But because block 1 was at a much higher height than the other two blocks were, that's why it had the most potential energy. And now we see kinetic energy. It's based on the mass and the velocity squared of an object. If the block starts at rest at position 1, it's going to gain kinetic energy as it becomes to position 2 and then as it goes to position 3. This is due to the increase in velocity that the moving block experiences as it goes down that ramp. Um, so that's how kinetic energy works. But why do we care about energy? The reason why we care so much about energy is due to the conservation of energy and the, con and the transformation of energy. Transformation and conservation of energy work hand in hand. As no energy can be lost within the system, the energies acting upon the block must change when the block is at the highest point shown at point one. Uh, that's where we're going to have the most potential energy and we have zero kinetic energy since the block is at rest. But when the block is released, the height of the block decreases as it goes to position two, which means that since the height decreases, we're losing more potential energy, but because we're now gaining speed in terms of us going down the ramp, now we have some kinetic energy that we have at position two. And then eventually when the block reaches position three, which we can assume to be at point zero or at zero height, we have no more potential energy, but that is when kinetic energy is at the highest because that's when the block is going to be going at the fastest speeds. 
These energies are really important to know as well as the forces that are acting on the block so we can find out whether or not the block will make it around the loop of the roller coaster track. But before we get to that, you have to watch more videos in this series to find out the calculations and to understand the calculations that go behind seeing if the block will make it through. So until then, see ya! Alright, okay. So first, we need to know what forces act upon the block as it travels from the top of the track, around the loop, and out of the loop at the bottom.